as she mentioned, it is entitled My Christmas. So look for it. Support one of your own, one of our own here in, uh, in Canada. Our next guest, I'd like to introduce Balpreet Singh. He is legal counsel and acting executive director for the human rights group World Sikh Organization of Canada. He is regularly consulted in Sikh issues in Canada and is a contributor to the Ottawa Citizens Weekly Ask the Experts section. Balpreet Singh regularly works with various government agencies as well and employers on human rights and accommodation issues. Ladies and gentlemen, Balpreet Singh. It's such a pleasure to be at an event like this, where we can all get together to learn about our different faiths and cultures, and come together to celebrate. It's so important that we have these opportunities. For Sikhs, just like many other faiths, life is used to celebrate. But it's also got a very deep spiritual meaning. The founder of the Sikh faith was Guru Nanak, and he was succeeded by nine human gurus, and the current guru is the Sikh scripture, the Sri Guru Granth Sahib. But Gu is actually a mixture of two words. One is Gu, meaning darkness, and the other is Ru, light. So the Guru is actually the one that brings light, that brings wisdom. The Sikh festival of lights is called Bandi Shor Dips, which translated means the day where the prisoners were released, emancipated. This goes to a story of the sixth Guru, Guru Har Gobind. Guru Har Gobind was very popular in his time and had a very large following and the then Mughal emperor decided that he was a threat to his emperor, empire. So the Guru was actually sent to prison. In prison there were also 52 other smaller kings of smaller kingdoms of the Hindu faith who had been very badly treated. And the Guru upon his arrival asked that they be provided with better clothes, better food. And he served as really a light and a leader for them, despite the fact that they were different faiths. Now, pressure was building on the empire to release the Guru. And when the announcement came that the Guru would be released, he said he wouldn't leave until the other kings were also released with him. So the Mughal Empire decided to have a deal. They said, fine, we respect you. And so, Whoever can hold on to you as you walk out of prison can also be released. Now the question was, who would he choose? The Guru had a solution. He had a long robe stone that had 52 different tassels. So on the day of his release, everyone was waiting to see who would come with him. He donned his robe and asked each one of the kings to hold on to a tassel and come out with him. And when he was greeted back in the city of Amritsar, he was greeted with lights, candles with great joy. So for six, lighting candles on Pandesha Ordevis is a way of celebrating the release, but it's also a reminder of those many people that are oppressed, that are being held as prisoners of conscience. And it's a reminder to all of us that we have a duty to do more than just what's good for us, but to help others, regardless of their faith, regardless of their beliefs. Now, Celebrating with lights is important, but the Guru's taught what's even more important is to light candles within ourselves, light candles for humanity. And those candles are of kindness, are of hope, of compassion. And those candles can serve as a beacon for people all across cultures, all across faiths. And it's something that we can all share as humans. So that's briefly the sixth celebration of Pandit Shor Devas. And I'm going to close with a reading of a couple of verses from the sixth scripture of the Siddhartha Gansha. Let the reading of your prayer book be the oil, and let the awe of God be the wick for the lamp of this body. Light this lamp with the understanding of truth. With this oil will your lamp burn brightly. Light it to meet your Lord. May God's light guide and illuminate all of us. Thank you. was up here, she had mentioned that we were going to have a poetry recital from Gwyneth Chapman. Well, Gwyneth has arrived at Better Late Than 